Hmm. So the two things about this that uh, got my attention. I'm going to ask him about two questions, and then you guys can ask questions. Uh, visually, it's stunning, and the the technical, the camera you used. How did you shoot that? <coughs> For us, it was important to shoot this film on film. Uh, oh, film. On film, yeah, because uh, this um, idea of plan séquence, um, I think it doesn't have the same value in video than in film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for us, for a small budget production like this, um, you know, shooting in film was very like it has something because we could not afford many takes. So every like we, there's three, four takes by shots only, oh, right. and it, when we shoot. Uh, scene, for instance, uh, on film, it feels like everybody's give a little bit more. is very ready, and everybody's tight, and the actor they know that they, they won't have much many chance to to you know to uh, to uh, to do it again and to if they make mistakes. So it was important to shoot it in film, and we use a well, it was shot on Super 16, uh, Super 16 yeah. and uh, mostly steady shot. It was. Uh, the idea of, uh, I don't know, that the audience feel the, um, the time, the passage, uh, the passing of time. Mm -hmm. um, and because um, we, we try to film emptiness and the void. So yes. the use of a steady shot, very long shot, it, to me, it was the, the, the only way possible to, to shoot this film. Mm -hmm. The other thing uh, is that a lot of ambient noise, from the very beginning we hear a lot of the back noise, we hear the crickets, we hear the birds, we hear the, in the bus station at the beginning, uh, the noise of the, you know, just the announcer, you know, the background noise. How much did you consider ambient sound? <laughs> That's a strange question to ask a filmmaker, but I thought it was, a, it was almost like a character in the movie, the, the background noise. Was that... Yeah, um, to be frank, it was sometimes the actual sound that there was yeah. on the scene because we, we were not the kind of production that could afford extras and we, we just uh, do it a little uh, in a um, barely legal way. So we just entered the bus and we waited. <laughs> yeah. to, and um, we wanted the sound to, um, to be part of this idea of right. the frame, of the yeah. cinema frame where this is what is going on in the image, and which what we hear create the all um, and you know yes. this. Uh, uh, for us, it was important to um, to go in a nat naturalistic way, that yes. to increase uh, the realism uh, to a, a level that is very like, because mm. Montreal is uh, actually is a quite noisy city, and <laughs> so it was uh, interesting to to. Because sometimes in film we just flatten all the sound, try yes. to sweeten and try to make everything slick. But for this film, we try on the opposite to make it a little bit raw, uh, so mm -hmm. a little bit more noisy, yeah. and it express uh, some yeah. s the life that is like bruising uh, mm. in the background. Yeah, well, I, th I mean the sound. I thought the sound design, or if you can call it that, was 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 great. Um, you mentioned that's a very low budget. What do you call low budget? Can you tell us what the budget oh, well, is? Well, I mean, low budget in a way that, um, you know, to uh, this film is, let's say, radical for, for and uh, it, was, uh, it was not able to, to, for us to receive that much funding for this film. So we basically we had a, a small funding for, from an art council, very low funding. It's mm -hmm. like, Forty thousand uh -huh. dollars. Uh, forty, yeah, forty thousand uh, dollars. That's uh, about twenty-eight thousand pounds for you, Brits. Yeah, and we just still decided to shoot this on film, and we put our money, and uh -huh. and at the end there was another big funding that we received, and it saves us because we were then able to make uh, the final version, the okay. mix, and the sound design. Yeah. Everybody who, who worked on this film, they did that. By passion, yes. the main actor he was not paid. He all, any of the technicians weren't paid. So we decided to, <coughs> yeah, that if we if we accept the answers no, which we receive from everybody we ask funding, uh, then obviously this film would never uh, never be uh, never happen. So 
and obviously this kind of film it's forbidden in a way yes so we had to to do it and uh, but the good thing is i think um doing this film with no one on uh, behind our back mm -hmm. we can we could have uh, you know, how can i say this uh, then we had uh, an entire uh, liberty. Of yes, of course. Of well, that's the rain that's way independent. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, and it, finally, um, and I know I'm asking more than two questions, but the 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 uh, the basis of the story seems to come from a very deep personal trauma. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering if it was related to your life or if it was something you made up. Um, I mean, we're. We're two co-director for this film, and it was important because uh, for I, I, I don't think I would be able to carry this film on my shoulder and show it to my grandmom and you know um, since we were two guys directing this, uh, we could challenge each other and it happened that it's we speak about taboo subject that it's not it's not subject that we're allowed to speak in Montreal because the um, and even in Quebec because there's some uh, you know the life that we're experiencing in Montreal is basically based upon um, there's no um, how can I say this it's in French, it's in French. <laughs> Of it. We have help here. We got yeah. here. I mean, like and the ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll try in English the last time. I, I would say that the life that we're experiencing in Montreal is basically based on this contract that is um, make that there's subject that we should not talk about. Mm -hmm. There's some tension that we should, you know, avoid to talk about. And there's some from time to time there's a, a weird event, just like. A few weeks ago, there was this uh, at the election in Quebec. The the, the prime minister, uh, the first uh, lady, uh, a first uh, a woman became prime minister mm -hmm. of Quebec, and there was a guy uh, who the wanted Margaret, to shoot the, the, Mar the Margaret Thatcher yeah. of Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a, a a guy who wanted to shoot her, so to he came to her, this yeah. uh, uh, her, like the at the her party at the end of the, the election mm -hmm. night, and he tries to shoot her. Mm -hmm. And this guy was an uh, English-speaking man. He said the Englishmen are waking up, so uh, and mm -hmm. uh, he, he he said he's gonna be a fucking payback. Mm -hmm. Everybody then say, yeah, he's a crazy man. He's a crazy man. He doesn't rep he doesn't represent at all any uh, uh, like what anybody can possibly uh, think. Mm -hmm. But it's it's I I guess it's true. But it's it's it expressed some kind of. From Malaise, I would say yeah, Malaise, that yeah. is in Quebec, and I don't yeah, it's know. It's not. A, sorry, Simon. It's not just in Quebec. I think anyone here who lives in Britain would identify with the Malaise and the isolation of, of the main character, yeah, um, yeah Louis. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in which case, I think that's how the film succeeds for me. Is that it? That was a Montreal story, if you like. It, the the themes reach beyond Quebec. What do you guys think? They're not thinking, they're still sleeping. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the poetry put them to sleep. <laughs> anyway, yes, question here. Um, first off, I'd like to say it was, uh, it was an amazing film, and I was glad that I chose it to see it tonight. Um, I was curious, your, your takes were very long, and um, I was also interested in the coloring you did. It looked to have a little bit of a grain. Mm -hmm. Was that, did you shoot on film, or did you shoot... Yeah, it was just a. Um, it was shot on Super 16, and okay. it was old film stock that Kodak gives us because it's uh, was over his oh, due date. Do. Yeah. <laughs> so we just uh, make a base and fog test just to make sure that we're gonna we won't shoot an entire film and it won't give nothing. So we just make a test and we see that the the look was amazing actually because um, it it was more grainier that the. The new film stock that we just bought, bought and it is uh, like brand new, so we we're amazed by the look that is uh, that it had. Mm. So we we feel that it has something organic. There is something like I don't know, powerful and uh, I don't know. It, it expressed some turmoils and some 
that the mm. protagonist has. So we, we, we choose uh, this format for this reason mainly, but there's some other reason to, like I said, the idea of filming plan séquence in film, it's something different than in video in which when you are shooting in video, the camera is always running. Mm -hmm. You don't even push stop on the on the button because it's it costs nothing. So in film, it's, it's different. Uh, you guys came in late, but it was about a three to one shooting ratio, so it's very very low ratio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anybody else have a yes over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've just been to in the last two days um, three Canadian films uh, in rain dance. <laughs> um, uh, a winds pass. Um, Familiar Ground and your own film, Laurenti. And I say this as an observation, not criticism. All three films were very sort of bleak with very unhappy characters. Do you think that is just a reflection of, um, I think the word you used yourself was malaise, and do you think there's anything specific about Canada or maybe Quebec, or does it possibly, I don't mean any aspersions by this, re reflect on the, um, uh, the people that are selecting the films for rain dance for the Canadian <laughs> strand. No, no, uh, I think uh, that uh, there's. I, I could um, I could suggest you many other dark Quebecois film and in the other films, um, it's it's truly a you know a tendency. There's lots of I don't know the the young filmmaker express some spleen or some I don't know some uh, some. Like, I have no other word than malaise, uh, but uh, yeah, the, there's this tendency of uh, like um, low profile character and like um, silence and uh, uh, yeah, a bit dark film. You're right. So. And don't forget that Canada's just north of America, what's all happy, happy, happy. So maybe that's a reaction. <laughs> We had the feeling that when we were doing Laurentia, we we just ask ourselves, well, are we too dark? Is it um, responsible? Is it like um, could we afford to make such a dark film in the the world in which we are living? And we seriously seriously ask ourselves uh, this question, and we come to the um, portrait, uh, you know, uh, um, Quebec as a like a you know, a very, um, I don't know, uh, a very joyful place, uh, full of, uh, you know, of enthusiasm and, mm. I don't know, we had the feeling that there was a morosity mm. in the air, so, and, um, I don't know, uh, an absence of perspective regarding the future, um, mainly because our political situation is not yet solved, we're still, like, Having the f we have our time to define ourselves as an individual. We don't exactly know if we're if you're we're Canadian. You're still, or you're still fighting the Indians in Quebec, are you not? <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's that's a Canadian joke. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can answer from the rain dance point of view. Is that we noticed this year some very distinctive voices: the Japanese, which we've had for many years, Mexico this year, and also uh, South America. Some very distinctive voices, and Quebec. Uh, the films coming from Quebec really are, uh, in my opinion, awesome and they have a very distinctive voice which I think reflects the artistic integrity of the cultural community of Quebec and they don't have to deal with some of the politics that their English-speaking brothers do in the other parts of Canada. And, and the cinema coming from Quebec is very gritty and very it deserves to be seen here in London. I, that's that's from the rain dance point of view. The fact they all may be bleak this year may change with the economic climate. I don't know, but anyway, um, with time for two more quick questions. Yes, in the front. Hi, the film reminded me a little bit of uh, early David Cronenberg. Would you be influenced by Mr. Cronenberg by any chance? No, I won't say that I was influenced by Cronenberg. Although I, I like him a lot, I, I would. I would say that we were more influenced by some Asian cinema, just, mm, just as Simon Yang yeah, or yeah. Fuxi or uh, Dia Zhangke. Yeah. And there was also maybe um, Ulrich uh, Seidel in the recent know. year, the one who did the uh, Import Export. I don't know that one. So it's, uh, he's an Austrian filmmaker All right. that has a very like a, um, realistic and very uh, raw uh, point of view upon his uh, society. Um, and uh, 
Yeah, and there's always for me and Mathieu uh, Chantal Ackerman, who's not far, and uh, her film um, uh, uh, Jeanne Dillman, 1080, Kids Commerce Bruxelles. Qui, it's, a, it's a film that is very important for us. So, mm. uh, But I would say that this, it's mainly uh, Asian cinema that mm. in those recent years that have mm. influenced us. Mm. I don't know, they, in Asia they have the. In China and Hong Kong and Taiwan, they have a, in other film they have a specific way to to, um, to to put a look upon the society with a bit of distance. Mm. They just uh, the, the camera is slightly uh, back from the action. And it's a, an observation mm. with no judgment. They, and it's a, I don't know. It's it's a cinema that influences us a lot. Mm -mm -mm. One last person. There must be one more question here. Yes, Joseph, in the front. Yeah, Joseph. Um, I'm curious why you opted for text rather than voiceover for the poetry. I, I mean, it probably was a conscious decision, uh, but uh, those texts, um, you know, the, the the idea was that the protagonist is reading an anthology of Quebecois poetry yeah. throughout, to, to, like throughout the film, mm. and. We find out that in those texts uh, there was such a great contrast uh, of you know because mainly these uh, poems came from a, an, an, a period which we call the Révolution Tranquille in Quebec where there was an exaltation of nationalism and in a, a time that everything seems possible so these mm. uh, poems are very exalted and by putting those poetry on these trivial images it creates a, a, a great contrast to, to mm. us. And we try to record a voiceover with the protagonist. We try every, every possible pro, uh, you know, process just to make sure. But at the end, we came back to our first idea that, which, that is to put like very text. in a dry way the text yeah. uh, that appears uh, on the screen. And it creates some, visually, it creates, I think, um, an effect that those Plan séquence, those those shots are wide, and sometimes your look, your gaze just flew, and you see the protagonist there, and some other, and it's the same um, process than the reading process. So mm -hmm. then, when the text appear, you just read it and the image, and it creates some formal mm -hmm. effect that was uh, interesting for us. Mm -hmm. But it it was mainly the context, the the contrast be between those images with bored protagonist and almost like uh, zombies in the image and these texts that are that remind us that once um, there was people that that thought that um, poetry can as a you know a, can be a, a victor of change I don't know if you can mm -hmm. say this. so Simon what are you working on now what's your new project uh, I just finished <laughs> it's funny because I, when I took the plane two days ago I just saw the copy zero of my of my new film cool. so, yeah and cool. it, will be, it will be presented in a few weeks in the, some festivals in Montreal. All right, cool. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a period movie. It's an adaptation of um, Anne Hébert's book. Anne Hébert was, is a famous um, Quebecois writer. And uh, there's an Anne Hébert poem that is the first one that yes. we see in the, in the bar at the beginning. Mm. So she's my favorite writer. And um, it's a period movie that expresses once again some... Uh, some part of our collective, uh, you know, imaginaire. Mm. I don't know. I can, uh, um, so it's uh, some. Did you get a bigger? Did you get a bigger budget? At that this time, one? we get a bigger budget, but <laughs> still, it feels like we. It was the same, <laughs> same context. So There's never enough no, money. No, 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 no. no, no. And what's next? I mean, wh wh where is this film going? It's been around to some other festivals. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's funny because it's a film that we've done with not. Almost nothing, and it's almost. It's. Uh, I think it's. It's twentieth film festival right. okay. uh, already, and we're going in a few weeks to present it in um, Murmansk, oh, at right. the extreme north of Russia. Right. So, uh, it's so are you going to Russia? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Cool. You get so, to travel. Yeah, yeah. yeah, That's, yeah. Uh, it's interesting because we uh, sometimes it, it took all his meaning to present the film to to the audience because when we do the film, it's. It's very abstract, and when uh, you know we travel and go into the festival and meet the public, it it, it kind of um, 
it kind of create the, the, the meaning that we mm. sometimes. Mm. <laughs> uh, you, know, you learn. Missing. You learn too from the audience. Oh. You learn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Simon, we at Rain Dance are big fans, and we will be uh, tracking your career and. Mm -hmm the career of this movie and your next one and uh, hope to see you again in London soon and thank you to the Quebec uh, people here for bringing Simon over and good thank you very much thank you, thank you.